Appreciate each and everyone coming out tonight. Had a little bit of confusion where the office, where the meeting was at five or at six, but uh, obviously y'all all figured it out. Uh, how did y'all find out about the meeting? Curious, trying to find out better ways to publicize stuff. Uh, okay. But y'all did get the newsletter from me too, right? Good. All right. Is the newsletter still, you didn't get it? I bet your address had been, yeah, your address should have been updated by now. Do you care to, to get that checklist and put a check mark beside your name and put one beside Brian's name so I can double check the address? I have had trouble with your address off and on for a long time, so I apologize. All right, just curious how uh, we're trying to find out how to advertise this stuff any better. Uh, the first thing we're going to go over is the speaking points. It's got the blue URLs on it. Website for the Cape, you can go to this link and research all the investment areas. The one big thing uh, to look at on that, if you decide to do a seating, you uh, have to, you can go to the forage improvement and there's an attachment on it to have varieties of seed that are approved. And, but uh, encourage you to look at the investment areas you're wanting to sign up and make sure what you're wanting to sign up for is under that area. Uh, poor Missy Bogle, her, she trusted her husband two years ago, signed up. And when we got down to getting things finished up, one item that she wanted to do under poultry was actually under um, added value. This is government, state government, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So please take a little bit of time, make sure what you're wanting to do uh, is the investment area you sign up for. That sounds pretty stupid, but we had four or five problems two years ago and probably had five or six before that. Uh, the next website here is Kentucky Proud Member. I don't know if any of y'all, most of y'all, some of y'all are Kentucky Proud Members. There's no benefit to you unless you're selling bulls, selling heifers. Uh, there's some, it's a good program, um, but you get extra points for the Kentucky Proud. So. Uh, there's a place when Jamie goes over the application, you need to put your product, uh, Kentucky Proud number on. And if you don't care, uh, log into this website. If you're just signing up, print that form out and attach it to your application because I've got to go through and verify that the Kentucky Proud number you signed up under is actually the one that uh, Frankfurt says you're under. And when they come down from Frankfurt, like they did four years ago, they pull all this stuff up and double check me. The last thing I want to do is give you money and then them come down here and say, I can't give you points for that. And then all of a sudden you didn't have enough points to get approved and have to get the money back. And some of this stuff sounds nitpicky, but uh, we're dealing with state funds. The website for the county extension office is listed there. Uh, Shane already said something about the newsletters, but there's a world of information on Shane's website that will help you in farm and operation. And then the water quality plan. How many of y'all have got a water quality plan? How long has it been since you updated it? Any idea? Last, probably last time we did this, right? Yeah. A lot of people in here was, would have been done last time. If you've signed up for any cost share through NRCS, any FSA programs, you have to have one on file. Uh, is it every year with them now? Okay. Wow. Okay. I did not realize I, I didn't done that. I knew they were pushing for that, but I know they got done. So that that makes sense of why that's on there like exactly. that now. The uh, when Jamie gets to that question, I think there are four options on there, and one of one of the answers will actually cost you five points. This application is a straight out point ranking. It doesn't matter if you sign up in Clay County, Kentucky, Caldwell County, Kentucky. You've got the same application uh, except one question. And there's a score sheet that we take to uh, score these by. It's just like when we were in school, they would, uh, sometimes you might have the teacher check papers. And if you answered this, uh, question number one this way, you get this many points. Question two this way, you get this many points. 
It doesn't matter. It's uh, not my opinion, Jahane's opinion, Jamie's opinion. Three men from Lyon County um, are the scoring committee. Scoring committee members cannot get approved. So the last, uh, last two years ago, and this time we went out of county to try to keep more people eligible. But uh, it's a straight out point ranking system. So you need to do everything you can to get the most points you can without having that score sheet. You don't know how to get those points. But the water quality plan is uh, probably more widespread. You can lose or gain more points in that one area than you can anything else on the application. We've got $93,022 for adult you uh, for adult Cape. That will fund at $2,500 per application. That will fund 37 applications. The county board chose two years ago, chose again this year to take $10,000 of the Cape money and set it aside for the youth. Uh, our talk about the scoring committee will be uh, scored by Lyon County. CAPE is limited to one application per household. Uh, like Jamie and Amy both can't apply. Uh, one or the other can apply. CAPE can only be paid on projects that were, are, that if it's already been completed, it had to be completed and date receipt, receipt dates after June 6th of 2022. I know some have had to uh, rebuild fences, some rebuilt barns, Stan Bonnie rebuilt the barn. And as long as the receipts are dated after the June 6th of 2022, and it meets all the other criteria, you're all right. But that's as far back as we can go. You cannot get reimbursed for immediate family members' labor. All approved applicants must complete educational components with the area of focus that you signed up for. One uh, caveat to that, if you sign up for large animal, you have to have BQA training as well. Uh, Shane, the cattlemen have a education or a meeting set up in January 6th. No, it's toward the end of the month. Down in Lyon County, and they'll have BQA training as well as the education component training as well. If you're not a member of the Cattlemen's Association, I challenge you to join. It costs you $30, $35. $30, meet four times a year, you get four steak dinners out of it, and you can go and uh, get your education there. And the reason I'm promoting the Cattlemen's, if it wasn't for the Cattlemen Association, the Caldwell Line being willing to be the fiduciary agency through this for the money to come through, there wouldn't be any way y'all could get funded. Um, reimbursement, uh, all approved applicants must, be com must complete the educational. That's what Shane's looked at the date there. You can only choose three investment areas. You cannot change those after you turn your application in. The final date to turn the application in is January 3rd, 2023 at 4.30. Um, once the, uh, the extension office will be open some, will be closed some during Christmas. You can call myself. My cell phone number is 270-963-0200. Or you can call Jamie. 270-625-6376. And feel free to call us before you turn it in. We can sit down and go over it with you. Any question you leave blank, you'll get zero points for. We can't go back later after you turned it in and answer those. So, and uh, we can't change the investment areas. So make sure you uh, choose three. When, and had a person two years ago, they were down, down uh, Dead set, this is what they were going to do. That's what they signed up. They wouldn't mark anything else. Then they couldn't afford to do what they had chose that, that investment area. There wasn't anything they could do but lose their money. And to the schedule for the extension office for turning this in, and the reason I'm not going to be around a whole lot after Tuesday of next week, I've got some doctor's visits and things. I will not be in town. The office will be open through Friday of next week for dropping these applications off, or if we need to meet Jamie or meet somebody there, I will be there Monday and Tuesday. I've already got several people that is called to sit down and go through these with from our early this week. The cattlemen's meeting that we're gonna have, the education requirement will be reached and a BQA training will be on the 31st of January at 5.30 at Lee Jones Park in Eddyville. And once you get your BQA certification, and you if you go large animal, please make a copy of that and put with your application as well, because that's something else that they verify behind 
behind us at the Frankfurt level. And it's easy to transpose a number. I, the older I'm getting, the worse I'm getting about that. And then the office will open on the 3rd of January. Uh, so you that's the due date for these. So there, you also have the full day on that. Is that a Tuesday? I yeah. think it's a Tuesday. You'll have that full day that the office will be open. I have marked that entire day off just to help with Kate final questions and and stuff when I'm back. Now there's a drop box on the left-hand side of the front door, a black drop box, lock and key. If you filled everything out and you're comfortable with it and you don't want to talk to anybody about it, that is your choice. Uh, you can drop it in there and I'll be monitoring that while the office is closed. The $2,500 uh, categories are large animal, farm infrastructure, fencing, all, and on-farm water, forage and grain improvement, on-farm energy, technology and leadership, innovative ag. To get $2,500 in those areas, you've got to spend a total of $5,000. It's a 50% cost share reimbursement for eligible expenses. Secondary areas, eligible for 1,250 cost share are ag diversification, small animal, poultry, and other fowl, value added. Um, whenever you turn your application in, please go by the FSA office and get a map of the farm that you're wanting to do this project on and uh, go ahead and attach that farm number, that map to the application if you don't care and uh, make a copy of your driver's license and attach to that and a copy of the utility bill. The kicker is, a uh, young man was here Monday night. He moved a year ago. He's never changed his driver's license. The address on your driver's license, the address on your utility bill, the dry address on your application of all got three got the max. Is is there any way around that if somebody that lives out of county that their farm is in the county? No, no way around it. I was able to figure out. Mm -hmm. I had to work. I, I can think of a couple of examples that mm -hmm. that's we'll have to talk about that. But they've more than likely got a they got a utility bill for utility the farm, where they're at. but they don't their driver's license is not for where it's at. But they probably got a utility yep. bill where they live. Yeah. Yeah. But you said the driver's license address the would address have to match. Got to match all three of them. And this is not my doing. This is Frankfurt. Been this way for quite some Well, then it doesn't time. then it doesn't matter where the utility bill is, then that's where I was getting at. <laughs> okay. We're good. A, We're good. <laughs> if you've got a cell phone bill, I imagine that address is going to match your driver's license. That's one they cannot trace yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, Just don't, don't worry about the, the address where the farm is. Yeah. So you're, you're do another bill from, we'll, we'll cross that other bridge because your farm serial number is here. Okay, the final date to turn all your eligible expenses in and request reimbursement and all the necessary paperwork is August 1st of 2023. We've got till December 5th of 2023 to complete the program. It will take a month to six weeks for me to input all this information and get everything straightened out. And so that backs it up from December, that backs it on up into uh, early November, the reason we've got an August 1st deadline, we've got enough money roughly for 37 applications. Guarantee we'll have more than 37 applications. If something happens, uh, you choose not to uh, complete the project, you change your mind, you're no longer interested or whatever, please, 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 as soon as you realize that you're not gonna complete it, call, let me know, let Shane know, let Jamie know, so we can go ahead and go to the next applicant. We can go to number 38 on there. And the only way I know to say it is be considerate of number 38. If you know by March 15th, you're not gonna do anything, don't wait till the August 31st, or the August 1st deadlines come by and I send you a letter telling you you've automatically been disapproved and then be giving that money. Give them as long as they need, as long as you can to let them get funded and get their money earned. Um, the past two year or the past two uh, program years that I've been a part of this, we've spot checked almost 100% of the applicants. 
I'm not concerned about whether you did or didn't do it. I would rather come to your place and hand, and hand you the check. And while there, I can fill the spot check form out. I'm required to spot check 25% of them, but we have probably hand delivered about 97 or 98% of the checks. That way we don't have to worry about them getting lost in the mail and get them back to you quicker. The guidelines you're getting ready to review are on pages eight through 11 of the producer application. And uh, Jamie's fixing to pick up there. Any questions on anything I've went over? And please do not hesitate to call me or call Jamie, either one. The only stupid questions are once not asked. What's the early? early? Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> early, she can turn it completed in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, no, once you're approved, once you're approved, once you're approved the yeah. day you get your letter, we will have the scoring. We will have the scoring committee. I'm hoping the first or second week in January, because there's quite a few with tornado damage y'all had, different ones had. The quicker we can get that money back in your hands, I know how I know what it feels like to be on the other side of that. And the quicker we can get it earned, the easier it is for everybody too. But yeah, just as soon as you get that approval letter, then. uh yeah, and especially if your project's done, and I can see several people in here, their projects are done. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get that letter, that producer report form, your education form, all that will be in that approval packet. Fill it out, get it in. I'll even sit down with you. They'll sit down and go through, make sure you've got everything, all the checks uh, for that producer report form, and then you get your money. And that just lets us know that that money's gone. We haven't mm -hmm. got to worry about that going forward. Yeah. Like and the sooner I can get them approved and paid, I've got a six month uh, report to go in, 12 month report. And the more I can get in that six month report, the easier it makes on me next year. When, I, when you're trying to get crop out and I'm handing you trying to get the tickets, and then Jamie and I are trying to get together with everything we've got going on, it just slows everything down for everybody. And you cannot make cash purchases. We had this problem last time uh, with people. Uh, buying pro uh, buying items and paying cash for them. You've got to have a copy of a cash register, re a blank check or credit card receipt to back up what you have bought. We try to get you a check two or three days after. Yeah, we, we, we both like y'all, we want the money back as quick as we need it, as we can. Uh, you think that's got me, Jamie? Right. Uh, up at the top, before he gets rolling on this, Jeff mentioned the uh, the guidelines that's on the back of your application. There's what, four pages? Four, four, pages. four pages. So uh, at the very top of this, it says, please detach producer guidelines. Do not submit with your application. Those are for your knowledge, for your checklist of things as you're doing your application for you to keep so you can check yourself and make sure you're not missing anything. All right, Jamie. All right. You fill most of this out as we go along. First section on first page. First name, last name, social security number. <clears throat> Mailing address, email address, home and cell phone number. And the email and cell phone number is invaluable when we get into this. And I will say, as, as he's going through this checklist, there's blanks there for a reason. Do not leave anything blank. As he mentioned, there's if, if something is left blank, it's it's points lost. You have pro, pretty much guarantees you're going to the bottom of the list. You know your farm number, FSA number? Put that in there. And what agency you're out of, that's a county. County your farm is located in. If you got a farm name, put that there. This tax ID number, it'll be the number that you're going to be doing your 1099 group. So if it's the same as your social security number, that's what needs to go there. Yeah. That's what a lot of people will just be a NA right yeah. there. And yeah, if you operate as Hillbilly Farms, but you don't have a tax number for Hillbilly Farms, don't put him in the farm down. <laughs> if you use your social security number, just put your name and put in a and farm name. Then the physical address of the farm. And that one for y'all, that's where you'll, that's how we'll tie that back from where you live to where the farm is. And does this 
farm number covers multiple counties. Anybody planning up on sign up on the farm that splits the county line of the ones y'all I know? I don't you did I went okay. The gray farm out there. Yeah. Okay. And there's no problem with it. Okay. Next section is about the water quality. Uh, it's, it de <clears throat> deals with a copy of the water quality plan for your farm and ask you, do you have a water quality plan in place? And we normally will help you with these. Uh, last time we did this, conservation helped us. Even we was in the COVID, if y'all remember two years ago, we was right in the middle. The reason we met here was because it's the only place we could meet. Uh, and what they did is we give them a list of everybody that had applied for this. Arthur just called me and said, well, what are we looking at? He had the checklist. He pulled them off. And the ones that had them, they could get a copy of it from uh, conservation. And then the rest of them, we sat down. I don't know how many of them I did two years ago, but I did a bunch of them uh, to help you get that. There is a link here where you can do this yourself online and save a copy to your computer, whatever. The certification, really, he doesn't need the entire plan. He needs that front page certification, yeah. right? And you've got, to, you've got to provide verification documentation with application. That was not that way two years ago. Right, right. But as long as they've got that yes. cover page, yes. that's your documentation. Yes. Yes. So there'll be a little old cover page that you'll have your farm serial number and everything that you put on. That's, your, that's pretty much your verification because there'll be some more questions down yeah. here that you've got to pull from that. Yeah. Uh, but if you do not have that, Jeff, myself, we'll make sure that you have that in time to turn this in. So let us know if you're going to need help with that water quality plan or contact the conservation district. So if you have, have y'all applied for the programs through the conservation we talked about? Okay. There's, this link for the water quality plan at the bottom of the page is not much count. <laughs> if you decide to go, uh, if you decide to go in and look at the water quality plan and do it yourself, when you go back to your speaking notes, that first URL, that first website link there, when the screen opens up, you could go almost to the bottom of the cape there, and there's a good link that go, takes you right straight to the water quality plan. If you go with the link that's on the front of the application, you'll be guessing for about two days what link to take next, because it took <laughs> me about a day, you being used to dealing with it, it took me about a day to figure it out. I know Arthur Dunn met with a few individuals this week to do their water, water quality plan. <clears throat> I imagine he'd be willing to, willing to meet with anybody else. That That's why, and I've got two days next week, Monday and Tuesday, that I'll be able to help get that done. It will not take but about 15 minutes to do it. We can overcomplicate those questions very yeah. much. <laughs> Thank way too much. Uh, on the page two, top of it, will you be applying for Cape funds in another county? Yes or no? And will anyone else in your household be applying for Kate funds? And that's a yes or no. And then if it's a yes, state their name, what county they're going to be applying in. There's a $5,000 cap on Kate funding statewide. Caldwell years ago chose to go with $2,500 per individual to make the funding go further. Uh, we've had in the past couple of times, we've had a husband sign up in Caldwell County in a his wife and wife signed up in Lyon County or vice versa. Lyon County is a $5,000 county. Caldwell's 25. He was eligible for 25 here. She was only eligible for 25 there. And when we feed all this reports in, it will, it will track back and catch that. But I don't think we, I've only had that once or twice in the two, two rounds. As Jeff said, there's just one person per household that's going to, in each county, is going to receive funds. And uh, there's a tenant form, if you're a tenant, that you have to use to fill out to get funds for that farm. Is anybody in here signs planning on signing up on a farm they don't own other than Nick? Okay. And if you decide to, it's not any big deal. It's just extra form to fill out. And Nick, he can't kick you off within five years. <laughs> Third page. 
first question. Check which best describes your participation uh, statewide and county agriculture investment programs. Cost share funds for the last five years. I have received cost share funds once through Kate. I have received cost share funds twice through Kate. I have received funds three times or more through Kate. I have never received funds through Kate. I've got a spreadsheet that shows who has gotten money for the last six years. And um, I'm going to pick on Clay. Clay may sign up this year. Carla may have signed up two years ago. If she got funded two years ago and he got funded two years before that, the husband and wife both count. So it's going to be, it's going to count that way. But uh, you can call me or whatever. And uh, I've, We'll have that spreadsheet and I can tell you exactly what you need to put in there because it doesn't matter what you put in there, I'm going to have to come back and change it because I've got to verify uh, both of these entries. And I'm going to be honest, after the COVID and everything, as much as chaotic as things have been the last three years, so many people having so much trouble remember what they've done when. We're not trying to catch anybody in the lie, just uh, I'll have to change it and it does affect the points. Question two, in the previous program year, check which answer best describes you. I have received funding for a completed project. I applied but was not approved for funding or did not apply. I was approved for funding but did not complete the project. I was approved for funding but notified administrator that I would not use the funds. I was placed on the waiting list but did not receive funds, or I was placed on the waiting list later approved but did not complete the project. Whichever one of those best describe your funding in the plan. And this goes back to if you decide not to do it and you call and let us know, then two years from now when you sign up, it will affect your points then because it's going to cost you points if you don't call and tell us and we have to disqualify you. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Everything to do with whole application does what funny. Yeah. Yeah. There, it, there's a portion on there on under. Uh, the second one I did not find. Yeah. Have you been a resident of Caldwell County for five years or more? Yes or no. Doesn't um, matter if you own the farm or five years or more, as long as you're a resident. I have managed a farm in Caldwell County for five years or more, yes or no. At the time of this application, how long have you shared financial risk and or participated in the business operation of a farm? Less than a year, one to five, six to 10, more than 10. Did you file a Schedule F and or Schedule C? For agriculture purposes in the previous year. Yes or no. Moving on to page four. Number seven. Please mark the statement that best describes your level of tobacco dependency. I have owned a quota or grown and marketed tobacco. I have not grown tobacco and or quota, but I am the son or daughter of someone who did. I have never grown tobacco on a quota. For this question, if your father or father-in-law grew tobacco, that will work for that. Our own device. Our own device, yes. Number eight, within five years, date of the application, have you done the following? Had a new farming enterprise, modified an existing farming enterprise, Add a new practice and specify what you've done there. And that could be like you started backgrounding calves, soil testing, uh, renovated hay or pasture with an improved seed variety. Uh, anything along that line is pretty well work. Probably not anybody in here that hadn't tweaked their operation in the last five years. So everybody should have an answer. Yeah, be creative there. <laughs> Do you keep production records for your farming enterprise? 
I'm sure everybody keeps some sort of record because they got to file taxes. And, and I'll say uh, from this, they've got you a list there of possibles, whether you're on farm analysis or whatever. If you keep an Excel file, if you're just keeping up with your stuff, that qualifies. You're you're keeping farm records. Yeah, there's really no reason everybody's not yes on that. And the part B of that question, are you currently utilizing record keeping software for your farm and operation? That goes back to Excel spreadsheet. If you type it in a Word document, if you take type, take your phone and you put uh, planning dates in your notes, and right there is computer, it's computerized record. Or if your calving records are all on a calendar, take pictures of your calendar, <laughs> storm in your phones. <laughs> <laughs> we're not coming to yeah. your computer I'm afraid of here. Uh, have you increased farm income by selling a value added product uh, and there again that could be like uh, background and calves uh, using a your, uh, hybrid seed variety uh, there again get creative with that do you ha have a marketing plan for your operation Yes, written, not written, yes, written, yes, written with the help of professional and no. And uh, as far as that goes, like Shane said on the calendar, write it down on the calendar today, you're going to sell a crop of some kind. It's a written record. If you're selling calves or selling grain or doing anything on the farm, you pretty well got a marketing plan. You decide to sell it today, you load it in the trailer, whether it's grain or cattle. Did you soil test within the last 24 months? Yes or no? And on uh, number 13, it deals with the water quality. Uh, list the up to six best management practices for the water quality plan in place on your farming operation. And if you've done this water quality plan, uh, there's a sheet you passed out with this. And you can check on that water quality plan and see which one of these fit best that, management practices that, that best management practices fit that category for your operation and you put those six six of those items down and those blanks there just like pesticide uh, bp bmp1 for pesticide and fertilizer storage or dry bulk fertilizer instead of writing all that in one just put uh, pesticide bmp1 and then I, we've got this general list here to cheat off of from that instead of last time. Yeah, yeah, there's just not enough room to write and it makes it hard on everybody. On page five, number 14, have you updated your water quality plan? Within three years, four to five years, six years or no. And as I said earlier, either give us Shane said he'd be willing to help you. You do it yourself. Our contact also done, and he'd probably be willing to make you if you have to your water quality. Yeah, Brian, Packer, Brian, Hannah, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. York. So, are you, number 15, are you a member of a county, statewide, or national agricultural organization? That's a Farm Bureau, Cattlemen's Association, some sort of grain organization. And then are you in a leadership role? Yes or no? Are you currently subscribed to Extension Newsletter? If you signed in tonight, Shane's got your address and you are subscribing to the newsletter. So that is a yes for that one. Do you attend a financial leadership marketing-based educational session within the, last, within the last five, 12 months? Yes or no. And we said if you're meeting with your banker to borrow money or discuss what you're wanting to do, you discuss finances in the last 12 months. Or if you sat down with your tax preparer, you pretty well discussed it. So, or if like been into to any kind of extension meeting, uh, Farm Bureau meeting, uh, you can be creative there, uh, association meeting. I think y'all went to the, the beef bash, we can make some things fit there. 
And then if we're getting down to the wire and you cannot, we have a video series of educational programs online that you can watch those. We've had folks do those as like sections of the beef bash that they broke into categories and recorded them. We'll make that work as well. Just need to know. And if you mark yes, list what it was and the date. And you're not going to know exactly the date, but put it, put it down and put a date. And that is different can be different, does not have to be, but can be different from your educational requirement for on the, if you're approved, you'll have that education report requirement. It can be both, or it can be something totally different. Then are you a, a proud member? Yes or no? And we need this, uh, that number put there for your certificates you're going to receive from the state of Kentucky. How many Kentucky Proud members do we have in here that went through that process? We've got a few, but we don't have this. It is a very, very simple, very simple thing. Their website's pretty straightforward. Yes, really. It's free. You you will need an email address for them to send your certificate to, but it will ask you some simple questions about your operation. And uh, I remember when we did one for my wife two years ago that there was a couple of things I was like, well, I don't know yet. We're just starting this. Check what applies on it. And it doesn't really matter how many categories. It's several pages of options of poultry production or fruit and vegetable production, mm -hmm. lots of things. Because if you sell that, if it's a Kentucky grown product, it's registered Kentucky proud. There are some incentives. Uh, anybody been at the Hyatt in the little mall area, there's a whole store that's nothing but Kentucky proud products. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about is marketing Kentucky products outside of Kentucky and in Kentucky. So it is a good thing to have. They will send you updates and you can get uh, marketing items, and you get stickers. stickers and stuff to put Kentucky Proud on at discounted rates. And I think they'll send you some for free if you ask yeah. for them. Yeah. So if you start selling at the farmer's market and you want that thing, I, you, there's a check box and they'll send you so many. You can buy the clamshell containers, put your strawberries in, stuff like that at their cost. So it can save some money. So there is some advantages to Kentucky Proud, and that's what this is about is yeah. trying to get more people yeah, signed up. Like a copy that to your yeah. And, and I, as soon as you do that, you, you'll get an email within day or two. a day or two yeah. of, of signing up. And if you put a farm name on there other than your individual name, go ahead and list what you've got on there. If you've got Caraway Enterprises, but over on the front, you signed up as Jamie Caraway with a social security number. I just when I will have to pull that pull that uh, member number up and verify that that number matches the name you put on here for the points. And this isn't me being nitpicky. This is whenever Frankfurt come down to look behind me. If you've had it for a while, your number may be expired. I think the three three years, five, three or five, five. five, five it's five, five years. years. Yeah, five years. So. That's something I just found out last mm -hmm. week that they will expire. Uh, have you sold ag related products to a farmer's market? Yes or no? Have Name of the farmer's market or is that for business? No, it could be an online yeah. market. Yeah. If you mark yes, you need to put what market you've used there. Yeah. Have you hosted an on farm demonstration, field day, or informational workshop within the last 24 months? Yeah. There's probably been very little of that since COVID, but if you have put that in the date that it occurred and what it was. Yes. It's a it's a market. And farmers yeah. are involved in it. Yeah. Yeah, and were your sales outfit you're involved in that March sale and stuff like that would work for you, David. Yeah, I'm really well, it talks about hosted. The, the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, I was on the wrong one, David. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you sold to Beef Expo, if you sold North American, you sold to State Fair. Those are all funded somewhat through Kentucky Pride, so those definitely would count. I think, a lot I of think, it, we would. think about it, it does to me. Yeah. It's a lot of times we think about farmer market. Well, if you're, if you're adding value to the. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason we're being so anal about this, y'all took time to come out tonight. And we want you to answer the question where you get the most points. If you took time to come out, I want you to get funded. I'm just going to be honest. That's the way I see it. The people that don't take time to come, we'll help them say it call, but a lot of people are going to pick applications up and they're not going to, they're not going to think about these questions. And number 21, you're here tonight, so you get credit for that. Did you attend a cake producer information on me? All right, there on the back, there are your categories. As Jeff said earlier, be sure to pick three of those categories. Now, something may change and you do not want to participate in the one you think you're going to participate in. And when you check them, check them over here, then select no more than three. Like in the past, we've had people check, well, I don't buy a beef or dairy. They check here. Well, they're locked into that. If you check here and you decide that you're going to buy a bull, you decide you're going to buy a bull, a heifer or whatever, if you check over here, bull, you've got to buy a bull. If you check over here, you can buy a bull or heifer, either one. We can't come back and change this later. So stay in this category over here. Or a horse. Or a horse. Anybody wants to buy a horse, they've got a problem. There's a horse people in there. But, uh, but stay over here. We're trying to keep from boxing you in any more than we have to. <laughs> and page seven, there's a acknowledgement there. You need to sign and date that. Make sure you sign that. We do have folks that get to the end of it, do not sign and date. <laughs> a lot of wasted paperwork when you don't sign and date it. Any questions? I have the application at this time. What did you say? I couldn't hear anything. Okay. Uh, appreciate Bonnie asking that. Go to that first on your speaking notes. Pull it up. Pull up the investment areas you're wanting to sign up on. And make sure what you're wanting to buy is actually covered under that. Had a individual buy a loader two years ago. It was covered under forage. He was using it to clean a barn out to haul manure. Manure spreader was elderly, but a loader wasn't. We were able to get that fixed later. But uh, make sure that what you're wanting to buy is actually eligible under that area. Yeah, some, some hay equipment is not. It's like, hey, moving equipment is, but hay making equipment mm -hmm. is not. Mm -hmm. It don't make sense. No, there's no rhyme or reason whatsoever on them. Did like deal with the IRS, you deal with it, Rick deals with it, some of us deal with it all the time. It doesn't have to make sense, but um, Shane and Missy signed up for poultry two years ago, got down trying to get the last few dollars spent, going to buy a chicken plucker. They signed up under poultry. A chicken plucker, what would you use it on? Pull feathers off a chicken, right? But that's value added. If, I promise it does not have to make sense. It yeah. can be that stupid. Yeah, we bought the whole chicken part. And then I couldn't reimburse. <laughs> but please take time to look at those investment areas and make sure what you're wanting to do is covered by that area. And the reason we do not print those anymore is we which is stacks and stacks of paper because some of these areas may have seven and eight pages of eligible items. Right there they are. And if you sign up under forage, 